Meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren, das war sozusagen eigentlich mit Blick auf die nationale Sozialpolitik ein Dialog zu Europa. Aber wir als Arbeitgeberorganisationen sind nicht nur in Deutschland tätig, sondern wir wissen, dass unsere Stärke der deutschen Volkswirtschaft auch da, daher herrührt, dass wir international in Wertschöpfungsketten integriert sind, dass wir viele Freunde auf der Welt haben, die deutsche Produkte und Dienstleistungen kaufen, dass wir mit vielen anderen vernetzt und äh, äh, verbandelt sind. Und ich, äh, habe, wir haben deswegen regelmäßig auf den deutschen Arbeitgebertagen auch internationale Panels. Und deswegen war es uns ein Anliegen, heute einige Botschafterinnen einzuladen, um über die internationale Situation zu sprechen. Wir werden jetzt mit, mit, mit Amy Goodman und Alda Vanaga sprechen. Amy Goodman ist die Botschafterin der Vereinigten Staaten und vertritt hier sozusagen die transatlantische Perspektive. Und Alda Vanaga ist die lettische Botschafterin und sie vertritt heute Europa. Das ist, ein, ein, finde ich, ein gutes Signal. Lettland für Europa und äh, die amerikanische Botschafterin für die transatlantischen Beziehungen. Herzlich willkommen, meine Damen und Please enter the floor. We do the debate in English. Thank you for coming. Appreciate. Please, um, where you want to. Excellencies, please welcome at the Deutsche Arbeitgebertag and um, a very warm welcome. We all know that these are turbulent times. We would have loved to have Jill Gallert here, who represents the United Kingdom here in Berlin. But um, as you all know, and as you have seen in Bild Zeitung every day on 10 to 12 pages, uh, with uh, Her Majesty uh, um, uh, dying and, and the, ki uh, the, the, the King coming into all stuff, the ambassador of her, not her King's ambassador, or his King's ambassador, no, her, I don't know the new dimension of her, but Jell uh, had, uh, has, uh, uh, has, has declined. So uh, actually, we decided to, to take you both for, for two big uh, um, areas. And uh, Amy Goodman, you just uh, showed up here in Berlin, I think it was in February or March, when you took uh, office. Um, you have an academic uh, background. And Alda just is also new here in uh, uh, Berlin. She is a career diplomat. She has experiences uh, all over the world, but in Denmark, Portugal, and the European Union, she, she reveals that she is a real expert. Um, when you, Amy, came into Germany, you are, um, were very outspoken that uh, this is not just only a political extraordinary, but a personal extraordinary experience to you. I'm not quite sure whether everybody knows your personal background and why you're telling this. And please share uh, your emotions and, and, and what has, has brought you to Germany uh, uh, with, with the audience, please. Oh, thank, thank you, Stefan, and thank you all for being here. Way back in last year, President Biden called me up on the phone, and he asked me whether I would be willing to be his ambassador to Germany. And he knew, and I knew, what an incredible opportunity as well as challenge that would be, but really it was just such an emotional experience because my father, who died when I was in high school, escaped Nazi Germany in 1934. And his daughter now is, and when the president called me, would be uh, the American ambassador to a united, prosperous Germany that is one of our strongest allies in the world. And President Biden made a point of telling me after that, after I was confirmed, which was some months later, he said to me, wherever you go in Germany, please tell our German colleagues how important that alliance is 
to you personally and to me personally and to our country. So I'm here to tell you that this experience is really a once in a lifetime experience for me and it feels truly historical to me to be back in the country of my grandparents and their, their parents and so on. My family goes back on my father's side. We trace our family back 400 years. And to fast forward how important our alliance is today in helping support Ukraine defend its freedom and its democracy against today's ruthless tyrant, Putin. Thank you. Alda, I would say that the EU Eastern enlargement was the source of, of, of the uh, possibility to invite a Baltic uh, representative um, a, as a member of the European Union here to the Deutsche Arbeitgeber Tag. You've heard um, the, the special uh, um, 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 experience uh, Ambassador Goodman has uh, uh, for, for the post. Can you describe what it's like for, for a representative of a Baltic state to have joined the European Union and now be part of the uh, great dialogue with, with all the questions we will, uh, we will touch on, 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 uh, on in the next 30 minutes. Firstly, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, I am really very fresh in Berlin. Uh, today is a kind of anniversary. It's one month since I'm in Berlin and started my work as, as Latvian ambassador uh, to Germany. Um, very interesting times, very, very important uh, times. And uh, just to answer your question, sure, uh, Latvia's membership in the European Union is very, very important. And maybe for some of us, just these days, these months, this year, shows how it, important it is that Latvia is a part of European Union and NATO. Some members of the European Union would not accept that I said Latvia is representing the EU because they have a different approach to the European integration. One of my teachers is Wolfgang Schäuble, and he always tells me, uh, uh, don't look always to Paris, uh, Rome, uh, uh, and other to the big city. Look to those who make the European Union vivid because they have a different approach to the European integration. Um, how do you deal with this pers different perception among the EU27 that, uh, that, the, that the newcomers um, are not so, sometimes seem not to be relevant? In these days, it seems to just the other way around, that you are more relevant because you're the most Easterners uh, 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 and you're cl the most closest to the, to the hot place of the Ukrainian war. Can you describe your emotions when you are here publicly or internally these debates? Uh, I wouldn't say that we are newcomers. We are uh, 18 years already in the uh, European Union. So we are really a part of European Union and we feel it uh, also. But I think it's uh, um, in um, discussions um, among, our, among our partners in European Union. Now it's uh, so important that we have uh, our history, our past, our uh, experience with Russia, with Soviet Union. I, I think it's um, easier for us to explain how we all uh, should deal now with the situation together, that we all should stay united. We should discuss, we, we can have different perspectives. We, can, we, we, we have diversity in, in the European Union, but uh, when it comes to the decisions, we are all united, and I think it's, it's the most important thing in, in our discussions in, in the European Union today. Amy, you said something about the special relationship, not only personally, but with the special relationship between the United, Na uh, United Nations, but uh, United States of America uh, um, and, and Germany. What is your experience now on, uh, related to the Ukrainian crisis? Um, how would you describe, has it improved this special relationship? Has it worsened? Are you thinking we, we could have done more on, on these uh, military issues? 
or are you quite uh, okay with this? So that's a great question, and it is the question of our time. I believe, and our country believes, that the defense of democracy is the defining challenge of our time. And we can't do it alone. And when I say we, the United States cannot do it alone. Ukraine can't do it alone. Germany can't. No country can do this alone. What I have found, and it's so important, is that Putin grossly miscalculated. He actually thought that he would divide us by threatening but invading Ukraine and threatening the energy supply of Germany. And instead, where you ask about the United States and Germany, it's true for our NATO allies and our EU as well. We are more united than ever. And just as the U.S. is doing everything we can in support of Ukraine, so I believe Germany is doing everything it can in support of Ukraine. Uh, Chancellor Schultz's Seitenwende speech was more than a speech. It was a call to action, and it's being followed up by action. You asked whether I think Germany can do more, will do more, and the answer is I believe, first and foremost, that the United States will do more, and secondly, that every country that is a strong ally, Germany prominent among them, will also do more. Because we will be in this, make no mistake about it, and I hope Putin is listening, we are in this as long as it takes for Ukraine to win. And I know that's also going to be true for Germany, for Latvia, for every one of our allies. And Let's be clear, the greatest heroes here are Ukrainian sisters and brothers. The courage and conviction of the Ukrainians is amazing. And that also brings us together, because you can only defend democracy with people who want to defend their freedom. And we've got to be with them, because otherwise our freedom and our prosperity is going to be at risk as well. So thank you for asking that question. And yes, we're going to do more as we can. Alec, quite obvious if I take this very friendly statement by Ambassador Goodman, um, and if I listen to the Baltic Stains, it seems to be that the American sound is a bit different from the Baltic sound. Would you agree or disagree? I wouldn't say so, that we uh, disagree, uh, that it's totally different. As, as we um, uh, mentioned before, uh, we are united in our decisions. We have discussions. We, we have different... Uh, um, thoughts and ideas and perspectives, but when it comes to decisions, we are, we are united. Even more diplomatic than the United States. <laughs> I'm career um, diplomat. So, um, if you say we, we've done enough on, 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 on to support the, the security of the Baltic states, or would you say there's room for improvement? Uh, uh, there always there is room for that we can do more. Uh, okay, sure. I can't catch you on that but, one. <laughs> 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 but that, then we move to easier questions, China. <laughs> um, uh, Ch uh, China is the, uh, before, the, the be, big... Could I uh, just, just to put a specific on this, because I think it's very important, let me just say that as recently as within the last couple of weeks, Secretary Blinken announced a new package of aid for not only Ukraine, but the Eastern countries as well. That was over $2 billion. And now, totally, the United States has committed $15 billion in military aid alone. And that's, I just want to emphasize this to all of us. We have to realize that this is first and foremost to help Ukraine win, but it's also we're defending ourselves. And we're defending all of the countries that 
aspire to independence from tyrants. So you can please go on to China, no, no, speaking just, of tyrants. I think, it's, um, I think uh, Chancellor Scholz did, did, did a similar message, not so um, explicit as you have done it with, with a further and additional support. And um, the president of the uh, National Employers Association, uh, Rainer Durger, uh, uh, pledged his full support of the German business to this politics. Um, um, there is no doubt about. But there may be doubt about the question how we deal with China, to be uh, um, uh, very frank. We hear sounds from the uh, United States, uh, which are um, very outspoken on the future relationship uh, uh, to China. And if I listen into our business community, we see that um, um, if, if it just comes to economics, uh, Russia is a small piece, but uh, China is a big white elephant uh, in the room. Our uh, foreign direct investment in China is much bigger. Uh, the supply chains is much bigger. Uh, I told that the uh, uh, president of the Association of the National Car Building Industry is here. Uh, China is a big market for, uh, for, for, for all of us. So um, uh, the future political and economic relations uh, to China are crucial to the National Employers Association. And please share some views of uh, whether we are in conflict on that field, because I'm not quite, uh, Chancellor Scholz said in an interview uh, uh, we, that he wants to keep the doors to China open. Sounds a bit different from the White House. Or do I misinterpret something? We definitely want to keep the doors to China open. So there's no difference there. We have said consistently, and Secretary Blinken puts it very, very succinctly, we want to be cooperative where we can be, competitive where we should be, and adversarial where we must be. What does that mean? It means that we want to cooperate on combating climate change. We want to compete on a level playing field to keep markets open. We're not trying to decouple from China. What we are trying to do, and I believe all the people I've spoken to, and I've spoken now to hundreds of CEOs in Germany, all of us believe we have to reduce our dependency on semiconductors, on scarce minerals, on batteries, on medical supplies, where we're overly dependent on China. And so we want there to be a level playing field. We're working on that. But we also want to make sure we take action proactively not to be so dependent on an authoritarian country that we can be held hostage um, the way Putin has held, tried to hold, tried to hold Germany hostage on the matter of gas and oil. So semiconductors is a great example. Um, Intel Corporation has come into Magdeburg, Germany in, with a semiconductor plant, an uh, investment of tens of billions of dollars. And the new act called the Inflation Reduction Act from President Biden is going to invest more in clean energy and other wonderful technologies, which will also help us be more independent of China. So thank you for the clear, clear statement on not decoupling uh, with China. And I think we are sound Europe and uh, US on, on, on the digi thing. Uh, there's a big investment initiative by the European Union. If we would have uh, another commissioner, he would be much more outspoken, uh, 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 not on redistribution, but on uh, competitiveness. So uh, I think it's, it's quite clear. But uh, in this respect, the um, recent visits of political um, missions to Taiwan seem um, uh, to even to worsen the relationship uh, w with China, at least to some interpretation we hear in the German media. Would you, would you comment on, on, on Taiwan? Taiwan is critically important um, in our world order, and we want to make sure that's a safe and secure world order. I totally disagree with the idea that Speaker Pelosi's trip to Taiwan worsened the situation. I think Speaker Pelosi 
demonstrated by traveling to Taiwan what freedom and interdependence means in a stable world order. And Xi's reaction to that demonstrated what a Chinese authoritarian government uh, would like us not to do. We can't be intimidated by that. That was a perfectly normal visit, and the reaction was not a normal reaction. No democratic country would react that way, and that's, that just demonstrates part of the problem we have in a world order where some rulers are not accountable to the rule of law and to basic human rights, including the right to travel. Alda, Ambassador Goodman pointed out, let's be independent from, uh, on technologically from, from, from China. Um, the Baltic states are always um, given to us as a bright example how digitalization uh, works uh, uh, perfectly. And um, uh, for example, some, uh, there are missions always traveling through the Baltic states, not only to Latvia, but to Estonia uh, as well, to understand wh what is the secret. Uh, what is the Baltic secret um, that you are so good on this? Please try to share some of, we're, we're alone here, so nobody's listening, but please try to share some of the Baltic secrets where we can take, um, uh, take up the ad, uh, advice of Ambassador Goodman, be independent, and uh, probably the second advice will uh, be some more Baltic on that issue. Would you agree? And please share, share some of your secrets to us, please. So, so many questions on, on, on once, but uh, I will try. I will just uh, um, try to, to explain this uh, China, uh, EU and China, Latvia relations. Uh, you, you may know that uh, recently uh, Latvia stopped uh, uh, its participation so in so-called 16 plus 1 format. That was a specific economic format for Central Eastern European countries uh, and China. Um, in our view, um, we saw this uh, format uh, as an opportunity for, uh, for, uh, to increase and, and uh, diversify our exports to China, to attract more Chinese direct investments in Latvia, to um, develop rail, freight, transport, all this failed. There are uh, Chinese direct investments in Latvia are insignificant, and, and now we, we are um, following uh, uh, Chinese relations to Russia after uh, February 24. Stopping uh, our participation in this um, uh, 60 plus one format doesn't mean that we cut off all the relations to China. There are areas we, we will continue to work, as my, my colleague mentioned, climate and, 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 and uh, also different, uh, different areas. And we would like, Latvia would like to see these relations um, with China more in EU-China format. It, it, would be, it would be important for us. But uh, back to why we are so successful. And uh, I, I, I would uh, maybe uh, use the uh, expression of, of uh, my neighboring country, Estonia's uh, Prime Minister Kaja Kallas, uh, who said recently in, in, in Berlin that uh, um, big ships need more time to adapt to new courses. It was in a different meaning, and it was, <laughs> but uh, smaller ships. Uh, are more flexible to, to change the course, to adapt to new circumstances, and I think it's, it's a one, of, one of our advantages that we are smaller, smaller economies. We need to be digital, we need to be effective to, to be successful in, 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 on a market. It's so simple. So, sounds not like a secret, but as a recommendation to keep Germany faster and simpler, as Rainer Durger stated earlier. And uh, did, you, did you do some um, special education of, did you tax credits for those who implement uh, uh, digi tools faster? Or was it just the state of mind of the uh, It's of the quite Latin? natural. It's quite natural. Everyone works uh, digital, and there are a lot of especially 
uh, municipality and government services digital. Otherwise, if you don't do this, you cannot really do your everyday life or, or interact with some governmental institutions. And it comes from school time, actually. If it's so mostly. easy, why always have we traveled to the Baltic states? You, you have a secret that you will not allow to share us, or we're not allowed <laughs> no. to share. We will not solve that question. Um, but um, if I take up the argument of Amy Goodman, it's not so e uh, bad with China, but it may be bad with China. So free trade with the United States between Europe and the United States comes on, on the table. As we all know, old TTIP is dead. I don't know really why, but uh, it seems to be uh, really dead. But free trade, if we, if we lose uh, parts of Eastern Europe, if we have problems uh, with China, if some other countries are not pa further participating in the free trade, probably the, the transatlantic trade will be crucial. Um, as we learned um, from old experience, it was that democratic uh, um, uh, administrations are not so pro-trade than Republican. Now we learn that Republican can be completely anti-trade. What do we have to take from the Biden administration on the free trade perspective, which is crucial to the German employers? Because uh, um, this is a really nice market, and probably you are, uh, Europe is a nice market for you as well. I'm really glad you asked that question because the Biden administration, supported by our Congress, is very, very keen on increasing trade and investment between the U.S. and Germany and between the U.S. and our European allies and our Asian allies all around the world. And while TTIP may not be alive, the Trade and Technology Council has made some real inroads in lowering trade barriers. We are very keen on lowering trade barriers. Where We want to lead with Germany and other countries a race to the top on investing in infrastructure, on investing in global health, on investing in workforce development. It's so important to recognize that for almost all employers, the real rate limiter here is a talented, skilled workforce. And Germany has a model that the US is very keen on building with Germany and other countries of workforce development. Germany's apprenticeship program is a model. The dual track here is a model for making sure that we don't waste talent and that every person has some track to a successful career. And that's really important in developing our ability to spur trade and investment. Germany, for the first time in, in recent history that we know of, is the second largest contributor to direct investment in the United States. And the United States also has increased its investment in Germany, and we want that to continue. So this administration is very, very much in favor of reducing trade barriers. Would you, what would you recommend from the EU perspective for the further transatlantic trade between the European, uh, the European Union and the US? You, you seem to be, um, you have been integrated in these processes as a EU ambassador, so um, do you feel that this status quo is satisfactory or where do you see room for improvement for European businesses? Uh, there, there is room for improvement. When, uh, I would like to start uh, with our internal uh, or, or European uh, issues here. And we touched already uh, a little bit uh, this energy independency that is very important uh, also for our, our businesses. So we, we see nowadays that uh, Russia uses natural resources as a geopolitical tool or weapon. And uh, because of that, our uh, energy uh, independence is, is, is very, very important. And this is the first thing we, we have to achieve. Uh, as you know, Latvia doesn't buy gas from Russia. Even from 2023, it's illegal to buy gas from Russia in, in Latvia. And we are working now on the diversification of our uh, energy sources, LNG terminals. There will be some built in Latvia. We work together with Lithuania on, on LNG terminal. Uh, last but not least, uh, Latvia has a leading role in European U Union on uh, renewables. 
Uh, we are in a third place behind uh, Sweden and Finland, uh, and we use 42% of uh, consumed energy in Latvia comes from renewables. It's, uh, it's a fact that maybe not all of you know. Uh, it's mostly uh, water power and wood, but now we are um, making strong plans on one, uh, wind power. We are working on wind power onshore, offshore, together with German companies. So that's, that's how we have to promote and, and, and to strengthen our business in Europe, energy independency, to, to give a, uh, a strength to, to, to our businesses and build uh, this, uh, or continue to build uh, relations, transatlantic relations, uh, tra trade EU, US. Two very different perspectives, uh, ladies and gentlemen in the audience. Um, and I'd like to fi uh, finish with two simple questions. Um, uh, first, I would, Ada, uh, you are, Ella, sorry, uh, you are president of the uh, Un uh, European Union. You, you, are the, you follow up Ursula von der Leyen. Um, what would your program be to get, get people more ambitious in the European integration? Your home country actually has profited uh, in, in a way probably uh, generations will uh, talk about it. I think the most important thing to stay united, we mentioned already it several times, uh, I think um, European Union is a unique uh, and, and wonderful uh, formation, if I can say so. We are so different nations, so different points of view, uh, south and north and east and west. And uh, when it comes to discussions in, in a council, there is, there is always uh, uh, interesting discussions, let's say, this way. But uh, altogether, and especially, as my colleague mentioned, these days with, with this security situation in, in, in Europe, uh, it shows that we are united we can agree on, on very important issues, and, and this, you, 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 to stay united, I think this is the main, main issue that we, we have to keep on in the so, Union. Um, President Van Aga, with a uh, pledge for, for United Europe, which is uh, uh, ver uh, very good to hear. I have a completely different but easy question for you, Ambassador Goodman. Please tell us, will Trump run again or will Biden run again? This is just as simple as it is. You can easily answer that one, probably. Um, if any of you has a crystal ball and wants to answer that question... But you're the ambassador of the United States I'm, of America I, to Germany. You should yes, know that. I, um, Socrates famously said, I'm a political philosopher and a political scientist by training, and, and Socrates famously said, wisdom is knowing what you don't know. I don't know, and nor anybody who thinks they know the answer to that may be lucky, but don't bet on them. Uh, what I do know, and I mean, I think the core of the question is, can we count on this transatlantic alliance continuing strong? And my answer to that is absolutely yes. And the reason for that is we are building now a strength, and I'll speak from the American perspective to the German perspective. Republicans and Democrats alike in the United States, along with President Biden and the whole administration and the American public, are so appreciative and grateful for what Germany did at great cost to itself in moving ahead and saying it's going to be independent of Russian gas and oil and it's going to ally with us. And we are going to increase trade and investment. We are going to show that we're allied in the interests of our citizens and businesses are incredibly important to get us through. We're going to invest at home. We've got to get through this hard winter. And that alliance is going to be lasting. And that's what we all need to be concerned about, of laying the foundations now for energy independence, for investing and speeding up the movement to the green economy, for making sure we can deliver prosperity at home, which is incredibly dependent on our businesses being able to do well and do well for our workers. 
So that's what's happening now. And I've never been prouder of the alliance between Germany and the US, and I've never been more confident that it's going to not only survive, but it's going to thrive over time. Excellencies, thank you for your time and your bright and inspiring presentation. This was necessary to broaden our perspective. It's not only on tariffs and labor market regulations. It's about the special relationship within Europe and special relationship Europe with its crucial partners, which are politically relevant, but which are economically relevant as well. Thank you for your time and the, yeah, you have been here. Herzlichen Dank an die beiden Botschafterinnen.